We're on a job site today, and I wanted to give you a quick overview of a pressure system. So we have all the components here, and I'll walk through one by one in order to help you get your pressure system set up. So at first, a pressure system might seem a little complicated, but once you understand all the components, you understand how the pressure tank works, you understand all the different pieces and how they go together, you'll be able to purchase them all yourself and most likely be able to set up the whole system yourself. So first thing we have, as you see, is our big blue pressure tank. This is a 32 gallon pressure tank. Uh, it's a bladder tank, which means inside of this is a rubber bladder, which the water goes into. Then up above, the top is pressurized and it's pre-charged at the factory. This one is pre-charged at 38 pounds. You wanna set this two PSI below uh, your lowest water pressure. So this is pre uh, set up for like a, what they call a 40-60 pressure system. That means the pump turns on at 40 PSI and it shuts off at 60 PSI and your household operates in between that. So this is set up at 38 PSI, two PSI below 40. If you're gonna run a different type of pressure system at a different level, say like a 30-50, then you're gonna to wanna to release some of the air out of this through the valve at the top and bring it down to 28 PSI for a low end of 30 PSI system. Um, you can use a simple pressure tire gauge on the top there. And you can use something like a bicycle pump if you need to adjust the pressure, you drop it too low and you need to raise it back up. If you're gonna go for a higher pressure system, say like a 5070, which is on the higher end, then you'd wanna set this at 48 PSI. This is a 100 PSI tank. So you don't want to exceed 100 PSI, um, but for most systems you won't be exceeding 70 PSI because that can cause problems with your household plumbing. It can cause fixtures and pipes to burst and things like washing machines uh, not to work correctly. The, the solenoids and the valves can go out on those if you have too high a pressure. Uh, the main part is called the tank T. So this provides uh, all your various connections. Now you don't have to use one of these. There's a one inch female pipe thread on the tank but uh, this is about 30 bucks and it's definitely worth the money in order to, to set one of these up properly. So uh, the main components of this tank T, one inch male pipe thread on this side. This is going to screw into the tank. There's a hole on the side over here and then a one inch input, one inch output, half inch, and I'll show you what these are for, uh, female pipe threads here, two of them, and then quarter inch female pipe threads here. I'll talk about what these are for as well. So let's get into some of the components here. First part is our overpressure uh, relief valve. And so this one's preset at the factory for 75 PSI. It'll, that means it'll activate at 75 PSI and there's a spring in here. And so if you go over pressure, what that's gonna do is it's just gonna start blasting water out and relieve the pressure so it can't go above 75 PSI. This is very important for a pressure system, especially if you have uh, a large pump that's capable of producing a lot of pressure uh, you don't want to rupture one of these tanks. Um, so this just screws right in here. And uh, why this is important is we're gonna hook up in a second our pressure switch. But if this switch fails and it fails in the on position, then that pump is just gonna keep running and it's gonna keep building our pressure until something fails. This is a controlled fail point. We know this is going to start releasing water at 75 PSI and it's gonna protect all of the downward plumbing. If you don't have this in here and your switch uh, gets stuck on, then it's gonna keep pressurizing and the next weak point is gonna fail. It's either gonna be your tank, most likely not. These tanks can actually take a lot of pressure. It's gonna be something downstream, um, possibly in your house, like a fixture, a pipe that's gonna break. To make my life easy in the future, I like to put a drain valve on here and there's a spot for it. This is also a half inch male pipe thread, screws right in. And I like the ones with the ball valve. Uh, I find over time, uh, these leak less. You're barely ever gonna use this. You might only need it five years from now, 10 years from now when you shut the pump off, or shut the system off in order to do plumbing work, um, or you need to replace the tank and you wanna drain out all the lines. Uh, I find over time the ball valves leak less versus um, like the gate valve, which goes against a rubber grommet over time those rubber grommets can fail and then you can get a leak on your hands and you have to come repair it. Uh, next we have our ball valve. Again, I like ball valves. You can also use a gate valve. Uh, these go on the outlet side of your tank 
So if you want to do plumbing repairs downstream, you can shut off uh, the tank, uh, the water from the tank, and then do your repairs. The tank stays pressurized, your well pump stays off, you don't have to go mess with the electrical of your well pump and shut things off. You just shut off the water of the tank, it maintains pressure, and then downstream you do your work. Uh, the next part I want to talk about is check valves. Um, this is very regional and it varies plumber to plumber. So in well driller or well installer to well installer. Now I'll tell you why I don't like them. Um, what can happen is called water hammer. And so if you have any sort of leak or almost just a regular check valve down at the bottom of the well, what happens is um, a vacuum forms here as a little bit of that water drains out of the bottom of your well. Um, so if the check valve, either in your pump or the separate check valve you have uh, right above the pump, leaks just a little bit, then it will create a vacuum here. The weight of that water is gonna pull down, a vacuum is gonna be created forever, however long you have that pump off, uh, the distance of that vacuum is going to increase. And what happens is when that pump starts up, especially an AC pump that doesn't have soft start, uh, it's gonna start spinning really fast, the water is gonna start coming up, and what's gonna happen is that water is going to accelerate even faster because of the vacuum. It doesn't have to push any air out. And so it's gonna accelerate really fast and it's gonna hit against this check valve. And this check valve doesn't have time to open. There's a spring holding it back. So that water is gonna slam against the face of this check valve and it's going to create a pressure spike. Um, for a pressure system that's doing something like 50 PSI, you could be creating pressure spikes uh, I've seen anywhere from uh, 200 to 300 PSI for an instant. And that's just going to cause a lot of uh, wear and tear on your system. A lot higher stresses and it's not really helping anything. So those pressure spikes, every time the pump starts up, you're going to get one of those pressure spikes. If you're starting up the pump, uh, you know, 50 times a day, uh, throughout the day, you're going to get 50 of these pressure spikes uh, every day. That's hundreds a week uh, and up to thousands a month or a year. Uh, it's just causing wear and tear in your system. So that's why I don't use uh, uh, extra check valve up here. So I will be leaving this off. All right, so uh, next part is uh, the pressure gauge. Now this isn't required, but it's nice uh, if you're adjusting your system later, it's very nice to have a pressure gauge there so you can adjust the high point and the low point of uh, the pressure switch startup. This guy just screws in here. It's uh, great for troubleshooting. If you want to see uh, the pressure you're at, whether your pump, how, how fast your pump is increasing that pressure, how long it takes to recharge your tank, um, you know, it, it helps with a lot of troubleshooting uh, in the future. So the final part I'll show you here is our pressure switch. These come in two varieties. Uh, they come in standard action and reverse action. For AC pumps, you're going to want a standard action pressure switch. For solar pumps, it varies. Uh, a few of the systems use reverse action pressure switches, and then some of them also just use standard action. Uh, you can talk to your, your pump manufacturer and see, and see what's needed. For AC pumps, uh, it'll definitely be a standard action pressure switch. Uh, the problem with this is you do need like a riser. And so if you try to, try to come in here with a little uh, pipe, nipple, you're not going to be able to connect this. And so what you need is, in this case, this is a three inch uh, pipe nipple. You can use a four inch or taller. I like to keep it short, uh, just kind of keep everything nice and condensed so they don't get hit or banged around. So a three inch is just fine. And then your pressure switch screws in right here. There. Uh, so that's the basic setup here. Um, from here, what I'll do is one inch PVC female pipe thread to slip. I'll hook up uh, the, the downstream line here, whatever I need to, to run. Oh, sorry, this is actually uh, hooks up to the well. So I'll hook the well up here, the water will come in here, go to the T, pressurize the tank, and then downstream is off of uh, the ball valve. Again, uh, in this case, I'll just use one inch male pipe thread. Uh, to slip and then I'll hook up the rest of the downstream plumbing from here. Um, in most cases one inch is just fine. Some of these tanks come in, the bigger ones come in uh, inch and a quarter. Uh, you can use inch and a quarter everywhere or you can go back down to one inch. Uh, a one inch pipe will provide plenty of water for a household. If you're doing a lot of irrigation 
might want to go up to an inch and a quarter larger, but for my use is around here, uh, an inch will be just fine. Uh, so that's the basic setup of, of what I'm going to do here. Uh, obviously, I'm going to go back. I'm going to uh, Teflon tape all of these, tighten them up real well, and um, pretty simple setup. All the parts are real standard. Uh, if you want, you can purchase these online, the complete setup, so you don't have to piece it together. But otherwise, uh, they're all very standard. You just buy the pieces, uh, screw it all together, hook it up, and it should run uh, perfectly well.